So you have decided that you are going to do some research and you're going to collect your data through a questionnaire or a survey. It's the same thing. What do you need to know? I've got you covered in today's video. In this video, I'm going to talk to you all about how to design that questionnaire and all the things that you need to consider from the offset. And if you are writing a research project or a dissertation or a thesis, then I also have lots of other videos. I have worked as a university lecturer for many years. I've marked many, many research projects and dissertations. So I've put together a series of videos that I know you will find super helpful. I'll link to some of those at the end of this video, but in the meantime, you can hit subscribe. So let's get to it. What do we need to know when we design our questionnaire? Knowing how to design a questionnaire or a survey is an important skill for beginner researchers and advanced researchers as well. A questionnaire is basically a series of written questions in a fixed rational order. A questionnaire is an instrument, really, that is used to collect answers to questions and to collect factual data. Questionnaires are often used in research projects and dissertations as well as marketing. So the first thing you will want to think about when you are designing your questionnaire is how will it be administered? There are different ways to distribute or hand out a questionnaire and you need to decide which would be best for your project. The two main methods are self-administered questionnaires, i.e. when the respondent is completing it themselves, and instigator or interviewer administered questionnaires, i.e. when you fill it out on their behalf. There are pros and cons to using either type of questionnaire and you should decide which type is more appropriate for your specific research project. Benefits of self-administered questionnaires include they are cheap and easy to administer. It allows for answers to be anonymous. Questionnaires can be completed at the respondent's convenience and there's no influence by the interviewer. However, there are also disadvantages. These include having a low response rate because not everybody will complete it. The questions could be misunderstood. Participation by illiterate people or people with language barriers is difficult. Likewise, there are pros and cons to using questionnaires that are completed by you, the interviewer. Benefits include participation by illiterate people is a lot easier because you're completing it for them. The interviewees or the respondents can ask for clarification if they are unsure about what the questions mean. You can collect answers really quickly and the response rate is likely to be higher. However, there are limitations too. And these include that there could be some interviewer bias. It does require a lot of time and effort when you're completing them all yourself. And it can be difficult if you have any sensitive issues that you're addressing. Okay, so once you've decided whether you will complete the questionnaire or they will complete the questionnaire. You need to decide how will you design it. I suggest that you start off by asking yourself these questions. What are the objectives of the questionnaire? I.e., what are you trying to achieve? What format do you want to use and why? Do you want to use paper? Do you want to do your survey online, on the telephone? What questions do you need to ask to gather the required information? What is the best way to word those questions? How will you structure your questionnaire? What will the layout be like? Once you have a draft, I strongly recommend that you test this questionnaire on a few people. This way you can check that people understand the questions and that it's clear for them. And then, if there are any issues, you correct these before you conduct your final research. So some of the most important things that you want to make sure and these are actually mistakes that I've seen a lot when I have marked students work. You want to make sure that your questions are relevant. I've seen so many students who design questionnaires and they ask people, what is your age? But throughout their whole project, there's nothing about age. They don't talk about people's age. Or maybe they do, maybe they tell me this is how old people are, but it's got no relevance. So think about your questions. Do you need to know their age? No? then don't ask them. It doesn't need to be there. So think carefully about what questions you're asking and why. Also think about whether the people who are completing your questionnaire have the information that they need. So for example, 
um, if you're asking them about what grades did you get when you sat your exams when you were age 16 and you're asking people who are older they might not remember that information so have a think about what questions you're asking and whether they're going to know the answers in their head or whether they might need some resources or need to check something in order to be able to complete your questionnaire and think about do respondents understand and can they interpret what are you asking and that's where your test comes in and that's so important and most people do not do a test they just hand out their surveys and the problem is if you have questions that people don't fully understand their answers are not going to be accurate they might answer incorrectly they might answer in a way that is not actually what they would answer if they could understand the question so it can be difficult because sometimes you write something down and in your head it absolutely makes sense but maybe for other people it doesn't and this is especially the case if you have people who do not have english as a first language because sometimes they might not understand certain phrases or certain terminology this is also especially the case if you are using jargon, abbreviation, specific terminology. So if you are studying something specific, let's say aviation, because I've taught lots of aviation students in my time. And in aviation, there are so many acronyms, abbreviations, terminology, that unless you work in aviation, you probably don't know. So you need to take a step back from whatever it is that you are studying and think about okay if I'm asking people who are not doing my course who don't have the knowledge I have will they understand this okay so the next thing you want to think about is what types of questions will you have and there are two main types of questions these are open-ended questions and closed questions now there are pros and cons to both and you want to have a think about what you think is most appropriate for your research so open-ended questions are questions that do not have a fixed response, i.e. the person is free to answer as they wish. An example of an open-ended question could be, what do you look for most in a job? Or is there anything else you would like to add about the product? Open-ended questions can be really good because they have a wide range of responses and information that can be obtained. Answers are based on the respondent and not the researcher's frame of reference. So they're more reliable often. There is a lack of influence. And the researcher can help to interpret closed end questions. For example, you might have a question that says, why? This is useful when there are too many possible responses to be listed or maybe they're unknown. However, there are disadvantages too. This includes the ability and or willingness of the respondent to answer. It does take a bit more effort to write a long answer than to tick a box. It can be challenging for the researcher to record answers quickly or to summarise accurately. And it can be time consuming. You've got to go through, read the answers and work out how do you analyse this. Long open ended answers can be difficult to analyse and code. Open-ended questions also require respondents to be able to read and write appropriately. And respondents may miss important things. On the other hand, closed questions are questions that do have fixed responses. An example could be, what do you look for most in a job? And there are set responses to choose from. Now, of course, there are pros and cons to choosing closed questions too. Some of the benefits include they are easy to understand, closed questions often require less effort when completing the questionnaire, it's easier, it's easier to analyse too and put into tables and graphs when you've collected all your data, there's less interviewer bias because there's less to interpret and it can be less time consuming. Furthermore, the answers are directly comparable from respondent to respondent. Disadvantages, on the other hand, include that there is less opportunity for self-expression or to provide longer, more detailed responses. And prescribed answers might not always fit what the respondent wants to say. And there is one other type of question that I would like to mention, and these are scaled questions. 
scaled questions can be really useful and these are quite simply when we have a scale. Scaled questions can be good because they are easy to code and you can use statistical tools to get some high quality quantitative data collection and analysis. The main problem that researchers tend to encounter with scaled questions is that respondents don't always fully understand how to answer the question. Now scaled questions can take lots of different forms. You could have a how satisfied are you type of question and you could have very satisfied, quite satisfied, satisfied, not very satisfied, very dissatisfied, for example. Or you could say, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you agree with this statement? 10 is very much agree, 1 is don't agree. There are lots of different examples and usually people will use a Likert scale for this. There are many different ways that you can structure this, but the important thing is that you make sure it's really clear and that people understand. Okay, so we've decided how we're going to administer the questionnaire. We've decided what type of questions we're going to have. Now we need to know how to put all of this together. So I would like to finish off this video with a few helpful tips on general things that you need to consider when you are designing that questionnaire to make it really, really, really good. When you are designing your questionnaire, the most important thing is that you can get as many accurate responses as possible. This means that you may want to design your questionnaire to be simple and easy to understand for those who are completing it. I recommend that you ask one question at a time. Don't combine questions, it can be confusing. Be accurate, be specific, be appropriate, be objective and keep it simple. When you are designing your questionnaire, you might want to start off with a qualifying question. So let's say my study is about students. I only want to hear from students, so I need a qualifying question to say, are you a student? And if you're not, thanks for offering to help, but I don't need your input and you don't complete the questionnaire. Perhaps I am doing a study about people who have traveled to the Maldives. My qualifying question would be, have you been to the Maldives? Yes, please continue, no, thanks, but no thanks. Towards the beginning of your questionnaire, you will probably also want something about informed consent. Now it is really important that you do get consent, that the person who you are asking to complete your questionnaire has agreed to do so. Now, I know that seems a bit obvious, especially if they have filled it out and ticked the boxes, etc. themselves, but oftentimes your university or your college will actually require this. So I recommend that at the top of your survey, you just have a really short statement to say what, what this research is, why you're doing it, and are you happy to take part? And usually they will tick a box or sign their name or something like that. You also want to think about your opening questions. We don't want to scare people off, so you probably want to start with something that's fairly simple, fairly easy to understand. And then as you go through your survey or your questionnaire, you want it to flow logically. So try to have some kind of logical order. So if you are asking people about a specific thing and you have a few questions in that area, maybe put them together instead of splitting them up throughout the survey. Hopefully that makes some sense without giving a specific example. And then you will also want to think about your layout. You don't want to squash it too close together. You don't want your font to be too small that it's hard to understand and hard to read. If you're doing it online, you may have a prescribed format. So for example, if you use Google Forms or SurveyMonkey or something like that, but it might be an idea to take a look at those websites before you start rushing in to, to design your survey to check that you're happy with that format and that it works for you. But just think about how much you put on one page, how it lay, you know, how it looks and, and just make sure it's clear and simple. You might want to use colors, you might want to use bold, you might want to put boxes, things like this. And then once you have all of this, you are good to go. And you need to write it up, why you've designed it in the way that you have in your research methodology chapter. And I have that covered in this video 